Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Jeremy, founder of QuickMail.io. Hey, and this is Jack, chief lead generation officer at salesbread.com. Can you make it shorter? Yeah, uh, C-L-G-O <laughs> at salesbread.com. So today we are going to talk about how do we shorten call emails? We've been seeing so many call emails that are like two, three, four, five pages long. This is not a sales letter essay. This is trying to get someone to do the next step, which is either reply to you, sending you um, something, uh, booking a call, something yeah. like that, right? Some kind of response. That's right. So if you've ever been stuck trying to figure out how you can comply with the best practice advice that says send shorter cold emails, this podcast episode is going to give you a few handy tips to tackle that. But mm. first... We need a, a word from our sponsor, Jeremy. Can you kick us off? Oh man, I'm going pitch to pitch me something, hate that. dude. Anyway, you. have you ever had problems with deliverability, uh, yes. or do you have uh, your call email working, but you want to scale it or like send yes. more emails? All right, good. Yes. So you're a good client for QuickMail.io. Just head over to QuickMail.io, one of the best call email software out there. We also have a free auto warmer deliverability tool to help you keep landing in people's inbox and not in spam box. Works. I like it. Okay, Polished. Sure. It does work. Pitch me. All right, pitch me. <laughs> if you have been looking to get responses, but people just seem to ignore you day in and day out and you're mm -hmm. frustrated, there's a solution. Why? Because most B2B companies lack the time or skill set. In order to turn your cold prospects into, yes, warm leads and booked appointments. So at salesbread.com, we will bring you one lead per day using ultra personalized cold emails and LinkedIn messages so that all you have to do is focus on closing, especially if you're, well, dreading the prospecting effort, you can kind of offload it to us. So what do you do now? You head over to salesbread.com, click that contact button, get in touch and... Let's get some business rolling in for you. All right. So Hold on, I'm feeling our sponsors form, are happy. <laughs> Let's talk shortening cold emails here, Jeremy. Right. So I want to kick things off with an obvious, but needs to be said tip. The first way that you can shorten a cold email is to remove the fluff that goes like this. Hi, my name is, I am with company. Never do that. Just hit delete. And your email just got 15% shorter. Yeah. I get like four letters out now because I just say Jack instead of, hey, Jack. <laughs> That's one tip there you I go. took from you. Ah, okay, yeah. good. So, okay, so no greeting. That's another one. Okay, so yeah, now we're at 20% shorter. This is good. Okay. Um, I've got another one. And this one might be the heavy hitter for me because okay. I think every message could probably use this and it 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 takes the most effort of all the tips I'm going to mention, but take your selling points, identify them and chunk them into separate emails. That is by far the handiest way you can shorten things down. And we're going to go through some examples before this episode is finished, but that's kind of the best, biggest way to shorten it for me. I don't know if, if you agree, if it's the single greatest way to shorten, Jeremy. I have a slightly different version, but it's very similar to your one. So basically one of the thing when I write, uh, I sort of like have the fear of uh, not saying everything I want to say. And I think a lot of people are sharing that because they try to cram. Oh yeah, but you can also do that with the product. And oh, you can also do that. Like, did I mention that QuickMail can also do mm. automatic import of you know mm. Google Spreadsheet? Oh man, I also mm. need... To so that's very difficult. So instead, what I do is that I write them all, but then I cut them and I, and I say, which one is the best one? And I take the best one and the rest, I say, I put it into follow-ups. So I, I don't lose them. And then in the follow-up, I do the same sort of exercise, but this time I have minus the best sort of like point I wanted to make that's been sent first. So that's a sort of like exercise. I do exactly that. Um, so mm. in the end, it's exactly like you. Simple bit of advice, but very powerful. And if you find that you have been sending five sentence cold emails, I promise you are sending too much information 
in that cold email. And that's probably why it's too long. Um, I would yeah, like just, to go. Just yeah, to go repeat, ahead. actually, when an email is long, uh, you have more chances of screwing up. I remember when I was, well, man, I do remember. And it was like more than 20 years ago when I was actually having my driving license. You know, the, my in, instructor just told me, dude, you want to just do what they're telling you and as fast as they tell you, because the shorter the actual test, the less chances of doing mistakes. And the same thing with email, right? The longer you do, the more chances you're going to lose your client or your potential prospect, or you're going to say something that will turn them off. Or like, it, it's a bit like it's like when you watch a trailer, you don't want to watch the whole movie anyway. You just want to right. be teased, right? Think Super Bowl, yeah. like another example. Think the Super Bowl, you know, advertisements. If every line costed you 1 million, you'd be super careful as to what you put on each line, Great right? Point. So Great point. If Twitter can make it, so can you. You know, you've been using Twitter. That's mm -hmm. it. 180 characters. I love that. <laughs> yeah, it reminds me of the quote that's like, uh, "Forgive me for writing a writing you a long okay. letter. I didn't have the time to write you a short one." I love this one. And yeah, it's beautiful because it means that to edit it down to its core, down to the one million dollar line, it takes time, but if you got one thing out of this episode, that's the work that you should be doing. So, uh, Jeremy, I want to unpack. Okay, so like, let's look at a few examples, like kind of coach me through chunking this out a little bit. But before we do, do you have any other yeah, tips have that more. are not? Okay, yeah, hit us. I have one more, which is, or maybe more, um, you know, they will come. Um, when, when you sort of like, you know, you think your call email is, is, is too long. Try to sort of like categorize it. Like, you know, you have the CTA. So obviously don't have two different CTAs in the same email, right? So don't ask like, hey, would you be up for a call? And then the next line is like, um, but maybe you prefer to send me back to someone on your team. You know what I mean? It's like sort of like two actions. So, but that's mm -hmm. the same for the value proposition. What's your value proposition? To have like to be faster or to do something else, right? And it's the same for this sort of like custom line or intro line, like try to do one of each, not two of them. And if you have two, try to pick up the best one. And usually that should slim your email pretty, pretty fast. Okay. Uh Category. I love that. And I want to go to an example of what you just said that, that nice. I think uh, illustrates your point here. I just grabbed a couple like snippets from cold emails and I'll share my screen okay. and let's, let's actually go through an exercise here. Do you see my screen? Yep. All right, cool. So we have this, that is to the T uh, multiple calls to action. I'll read it. <laughs> Thought you would be the best person to discuss your company's call tracking needs. And if we would be a good fit working together. If you are the right person, does a call Wednesday work? If not, any helping points in the right direction would be much appreciated. So this is a classic, well, two part or two different CTAs in one message. So if I'm hearing you right, Jeremy. Yeah, you can remove the last line. You know, if you that, want to try, you know, to shorten stuff. There you go. Then okay. obviously you can always revisit. Like if this happened to not give you a lot of replies, maybe it's because too aggressive or like, then you could go to quickmail.io slash called dash email dash CTA. And then you'll have, well, you know, Jack and I big list of hundred different CTAs. So you can pick up, you know, one that will get you more. I really. think. Was that? Yeah. I think there's 106 CTAs on that. Did I, so I there's say no more shortage. than hundred? Are you trying to be a smart ass with me today, plus. Jack? <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing? Okay, cool. So let's, um, <laughs> let's wind down this episode with one more example. This time, let's uh, focus on ways that we can zero in on simplifying the value prop and the social proof. And, and hopefully maybe making that into one sentence if we're really on top of our game here. Okay. okay. So let's grab, let's grab an email. That's an easy here. one we so should we've... have mentioned as well. Don't do bullet points. I mean, you can try bullet points, but that's an easy one of shortening. When you do bullet points is usually because A, you're, sort of like want to communicate too much information into, you know, not much space. So. Right. And I've, I've found out that every single bullet point can be a, a standalone email if it's important enough. Nice. So you could literally just take a bullet point. If it really is a million dollar line, 
give it its own dedicated email because if you're reaching out to CTOs, they're not going to carefully examine each bullet point and think about if they should respond to you or not. Usually, you know, usually what? you got one, you got six seconds to win their attention and you don't if do you that. Hire, with if you points. hire someone who writes your emails, he should pay you for each line. So that way, you know, whenever it submits to you, even like you may pay, you know, that person, I don't know, 2000 a month or 5,000 a month, whatever, but you ask him to, you know, uh, to pay you whenever I submit something. <laughs> it's like every night is 50 bucks, whatever. That could be fun. It's not the worst idea. Okay. <laughs> or it's like, yeah, if you can send me the a one sentence or even email, $5, you get it doesn't matter. Yeah, something. That's great. All right. Okay. Um, so I just wanted to make one point here. Um, let's read this long sentence and think about how we can kind of say all of this into a sentence. Maybe not all of it. Let's just let's just pick out hardware neutral software, whatever that means. Um, okay, so we have our benefit we want to convey. We've also have uh, social proof. So we've got companies that have uh, bought in already. Um, let's try and make this one sentence. Maybe okay, you want that... to read it for listeners. Yeah, of course. Maybe. Okay, so here is the sentence plus a bullet point before we simplify it. SwiftStack's on-premise cloud storage platform powered by open source technology has benefited companies such as Verizon, Oklahoma Medical Research Foundation, and eBay for their private cloud backup and archive needs because we offer hardware neutral software. Okay. Well, so many buzzwords. Right. It's a lot. Sorry, yeah, it's anyway. a lot. So uh, in, what I want to do is leave the names in there, okay? Mm -hmm. um, but basically just shorten it um, and throw in the fact that it's hardware neutral uh, software. So Jeremy, if I'm not oversimplifying it, can't I just copy hardware neutral software and, and say, exactly yeah, just, just say on-premise cloud service powered by open source technology and hardware neutral software. Um, has been it for an eBay and then like, again, probably an obvious change, I suppose, but I just want to show a quick example of how you can have social proof and your unique selling point, your benefit in, two in one line, sentence. Yeah. And so the Simple idea enough, is I mean, to cut everything after the name of the, um, the companies, right? In this case, including the bullets. Mm -hmm. um, and you may also want to, like if, if we picked it apart one more time, we can actually see they've got other features that they're touting in this line. So they mentioned on-premises, mm -hmm. they mentioned cloud storage, they mentioned open it's source. open source. Yeah. Um, and they then you can go through that process of elimination hard... again one more time and then just use that. And maybe Verizon That's, choose you because you were on premise and maybe, you know, eBay choose you because you were open source. And so that way you could effectively, you know, build up on each of your follow-ups, right? Is that the idea you're going with, Jack? Exactly. So I may, um, like, if we just did that one tweak, what we did was we're just distilling. We're saying, look, we know that the on-prem or the, hardware neutral software is the most compelling benefit. And we know that when people find out Verizon uses us, that's going to, you know, kind of um, win some credibility. So let's make one simplified sentence with both. And what do you have to do? You have to say goodbye to tier two features, tier two benefits that, you know, are not really um, going to help you stand out from the competition. Everybody's, uh, I don't know, open source these days. Okay, so kill it. And that's how uh, you end up with the million dollar line, Jeremy, that you said. You've got a shorter email that still has the stuff. Yeah, pretty clear. Um, pretty clear. Pretty clear. Yeah. Do you okay. have more things specifically? No more things. I have that's one it. last um, tip, actually. Hit me. Write it by hand, because it's so painful to write by hand that uh, you will very quickly uh, <laughs> not do it. <laughs> Interesting. 
right by, by you know hand. do it you know and then once you're done try to just write it by hand and and see how it feels it's a bit of an old like school that. stuff but um, yeah painful enough that people won't do that on premise come up now open if you source, ask me to write it in up. cursive by hand then i would be writing three word emails but uh but that's a hey, great when tip i talk and... <laughs> jack exactly and like i'm sure it would be you know <laughs> in a crayon all right jeremy thank you um, all right i i'm glad we covered how to shorten the cold email of course if you like this cast and you want some more great tips uh for frankly sending cold emails that your people actually reply to do check out course.quickmail.io. It's the masterclass where Jamie and I have uh, carefully put down eight modules that take you from a pretty, pretty good cold emailer to a great, you could be um, in business just offering the service if you really wanted to, because you're doing it like the top 1% of pros. Um, right, from zero you you kind of know the secrets agencies know to kind of make any campaign work and, and automate it. So course.quickmail.io is a very good next step. Um, that's it for me, J Jeremy. Great cast. Thank you for your insights today. There you go. Thanks, Jack. You're on fire. Awesome cast. Yeah, you too, man. Cool.